Davidson from Beyond Solitaire, and today I'm going to be reviewing FASA, a cooperative sci-fi game about an alien invasion designed by Benjamin Fairman. So here's FASA all set up to play. FASA is a cooperative sci-fi game where the, these aliens called the FASA have decided to attack Earth and they want to terraform all the tiles to make Earth like their home planet, and they're also looking to kill you and the alien rebels. Who are with you. So the object of the game is for you, your characters, and these purple rebel aliens to take out these three motherships that will move around the board and cause a lot of chaos for you. One of the motherships is a carrier ship that just goes around dropping more alien drones all over the board. One of them is a terraformer that will go around changing the planet. So as you can see, the one that it starts on uh, is already flipped over to the terraformed side. It's that darker orange. And then there's a destroyer mothership that does exactly what you think it does, based on the fact that it's called a destroyer. The game is harder to win than it is to lose, as is the case with most games, I guess. But uh, your goal is to destroy all of these ships, but all they have to do is kill one of your characters or if all four outposts are terraformed that can bring it into the game or as more drones are placed on the board if you run out of these guys in the supply and you can't place any more but you should have to according to the rules again you will lose the game the outposts are crucial because those are where you're able to heal up but also very significantly they are where you're able to summon rebel aliens to help you in your fight because you can't actually attack any of these motherships yourself you can only summon rebels get them into the same space as the mothership clear out any of the enemy drones there and then send them in to do some damage the way that the term works is it starts with the team phase. So what's going to happen here is each of your characters gets to complete actions as many as they want and in any order that you choose. So it's not like, oh, it's the yellow player's turn and they have to do all of their activities before the next person can go. Instead, the turn truly is cooperative and it's just a riot of everybody taking all the actions that they possibly can. This is probably easier solo, actually, because you can see the global plan and you don't have to argue with anybody about what to do. But the way the characters work is that everybody's got a different specialty. So in this case, I have the rebel who can spin two points. That is drones that I've killed and collected to transform a drone on my tile into a rebel. So I can change orange drones into purple rebels and that helps me win. And then you have the engineer that lets you expend your teleport card. So one of these to go to another player and kill a drone on that tile. What's interesting is that there are other characters with their own actions. So you have a red character who's more of a tactician and a green character who's kind of a healer, but you have two options for each. So here we have the soldier and the scout, the farmer and the doctor, and then the players that we selected for this little show off moment. Uh, you also have a senator and a scientist. So you have some different choices between specialties and that extends to not only having four different colors, but also two types of character within each color. So in addition to your special ability, you're gonna have these dual action cards. Basically you can exhaust each of your cards for one of the actions of the card. So I can run or I can use my ray gun to fire on somebody. I can use the airplane or I can add a rebel to any outpost. So you wanna make sure that you are paying attention to what you really need to get done and using your cards as efficiently as possible. When you get injured, your cards become less efficient. So you can be hurt up to four times before you die. If one of the players dies, you lose the game. But you flip a card over when you're hurt and it changes it to hobble and recover. So recover means you need to get over to an outpost. Probably you're gonna hobble there to heal your card. So the cards are really the true heart of the game for you as a player because you're using them to choose your actions and your actions become limited as you get hurt. 
and it's actually fairly easy to get hurt. So let's just talk about combat really quick. Combat is resolved through die rolls. And basically you will roll one die for each of the enemies on the tile. So this case would be two dice for the two drones. And here I rolled a four and a two. A four is high enough to get rid of one of the drones. A two isn't, so it's four and up to hit on most tiles. It would be three and up on that yellow outpost, which my yellow player is on, but they only rolled a two. So um, basically what will happen is that I would be injured if I were alone, but they actually take out your rebel first. So to resolve combat, I would have removed one drone and one rebel from the map. And of course your rebels are crucial in order to win, so you don't want to lose too many of them. So they, they keep you alive by shielding you but you also can't lose them all or else you can't win the game. After you've taken your turn, the motherships get to go. And basically a mothership will take a turn for every player. So if you are in a two player game, the destroyer ship will go and then the former ship will go. And each of these is gonna tell you what they do. So the carrier ship will move, drop some drones, move again, drop more drones, move again and drop more drones. I think you can tell that it's, its job is to get this supply out on this board to make you lose. The destroyer ship will move and then kill all rebels on a tile. And then players will get injuries and then it drops more drones. I'm sure you're shocked. And then the former ship will move, flip the tile the ship is on, move again, flip another tile, and then drop more drones. So these turns are already tremendously damaging. But what's interesting is that if Let's say that I've managed to get down here, get rid of all these drones, and we're gonna fight. Basically, in order to damage this carrier, I have to expend one rebel to basically go freedom into the ship. They die. I reduce this by one life, but I don't get to automatically toss my other rebel in just yet. Instead, I have to draw one of these Faza cards, and this is where the game really gets difficult, I think, because you just don't know what's going to come out of here. You know what these guys are going to do. It's bad, but you can plan for it. Your actions, you know what actions you have. Sometimes they feel limited if you've been hurt, but you can plan for them. The Faza deck, you really can't plan for. Um, sometimes things that come out of here are rewards, but sometimes they're just terrible. So this one's infrared. The Faza activate their infrared scanners and search for groups of humans giving off heat. Add two drones to tiles with two or more characters. So this would have been a disaster in the middle of my turn because you can only attack the mothership when all the drones are gone and only you and rebels remain. So if I had to add more drones to where the human players are, then that would mean that I didn't get to do anything with this rebel. There's more drones here on this tile and I'm gonna have to get rid of them again on my next turn in order to be able to attack this again. So a lot of these will stop your turn or your plans for your turn right in its place. But there are also some cool rewards too. Like there's a card that lets you turn invisible and you can move around without being seen by any drones or anyone until you engage in combat. There's a med pack in here. So some of the results of the Faza deck are very bad. Some of them are very good. And frankly, whatever comes off of here is pretty much what determines whether you're gonna win or lose. The die rolls are random, obviously, like you're rolling dice, but I found in games that it's really the Foz deck that made or broke me in my path to victory or defeat. So that's an overview of Faza. It's a relatively simple cooperative game with lots of die rolling, lots of crazy events coming out of a card deck, brutal mother shifts, and few but tough human fighters with their alien rebel friends. So now for some final thoughts. Faza is a game that I think has an audience, but I think that it's a particular audience. So we're going to talk through why that would be. First of all, I want to say I like most of the way that it works mechanically. I think it's really cool the way that the different players are encouraged to work together. I like the way that actions work. I think that flipping your cards over to have worse actions until you recover makes a lot of sense. And the way that the players are able to work together, including by alternating who takes actions within a turn, is really, really cool. Especially if you have a cooperative team that works well together. I can see this being a fun, quick outing on a game night. I also think that the game's world and art is really nice. I will say that it's a little too much yellow-orange for me, but the kind of retro sci-fi feel of the whole thing is definitely there, and it's nice. And so if you like to feel drawn in by the theme of the game that you're playing, it really does feel like you're desperately running around trying to fight a bunch of nasty alien motherships. 
overall, the turns run very efficiently. The rule book is done well. And there's a lot to recommend about the game. However, it doesn't quite do it for me for a couple of reasons. One, I'm not sure this game is actually that great to play solo. This is not of the solo games that I've played so far this year, one that I'm going to wait again to pull off the shelf and be excited about. I think that the best audience for this particular game might be maybe introducing a cooperative game to a family or maybe even to someone who is younger and just having a really good time with all the random stuff that happens. This is a game that feels like it might have a little bit more strategy than I think it does. And that is because, I mean, there are die rolls, a lot of games have those, but also this game is very, very much driven by what comes off the top of that Faza deck. Many of my best laid plans were destroyed by that deck, but in ways that were very sweet and very frustrating. So I like, I like randomness in a lot of my games. I think that that's just part of thematic gaming and overall it's not an issue. However, the Faza deck is so swingy that in many ways it made the game unpleasant to play because either the victory would be too easy because too many of the cards that came off the Faza deck were so positive that it wasn't very difficult to win or the game felt impossible to win because everything that came off that Faza deck was so nasty that it felt like there was just no chance and it kind of sucked some of the fun out. For someone who's looking to play kind of a puzzly solo game where they really get to think through the moves and like kind of figure out the AI and determine what to do. Um, it's not really a perfect fit, at least in my opinion. And if you're looking for just a thematic game to play, I think that there are more exciting thematic games to play solo. This is a game that I maybe would keep in my classroom to see if my students like it. But while it's a perfectly decent game, I don't see it becoming a perennial favorite. So for me, it is a six out of 10. Thanks for watching and happy gaming. Yeah.